Good morning, folks. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Thursday morning, 1040 a.m. That's California time here, October 30th, 2025. Halloween tomorrow. Uh, latest activity here on the map. Looks like some movement up into the Alaska area right now with a uh, kind of a large quake, a 5.6 earthquake into the uh, Aleutian Trench up here. Been pretty active uh, across this area in the last couple days. That 5.6 south of anchorage about uh, 50 or 60 miles or so let's see if we got anybody reporting this earthquake out here uh, it does look like a few folks around the anchorage area reported feeling that quake mainly down south of course around the epicenter of that 5.6 uh, that just came in here a short time ago uh, it is showing up on the kodiak island alaska station um, which is a little bit further away from the area, but uh, that's a uh, little decent quake up there. I don't know if that's the largest one here in the last 24 hours. Let's take a look. Uh, it is. So that 5.6, 12 miles deep here into the Aleutian Trench. We've had a lot of activity here across the western areas of the Pacific Plate here with large-scale movement up and down the board. Uh, earlier, well, a couple months ago, we had a seven-pointer out here around the um, uh, the Sand Point area of the Aleutian Trench. And uh, that was a seven-pointer. This specific area over here, though, lacking some decent movement uh, as far as any major adjustment goes. So I might want to keep an eye on that. A 5.6, you know, not a, not a huge earthquake, but it's the largest one uh, in this area, I would believe, in the last, at least in the last couple months. We'll double-check that. It was 5.1 back uh, middle of this month, a little bit further along the Aleutian Trench. But like I said, it's this area I'm kind of watching. This is uh, you know capable of producing some big time mega quakes. They've uh, they've definitely had their share of mega quake activity throughout time, and uh, we might want to keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on that region. Uh, aside from that, uh, let's see. Some earthquake activity across the Aleutian Trench and even a little change here to a volcano uh, near the uh, it's the Atka Volcanic Complex. Had a little explosion last night in the PM, about 927 uh, Alaska time there. It's from the uh, uh, Krovin Volcano. Just a small little uh, explosion, but uh, they did raise the alert level to yellow and advisory. So if we back out, you guys can kind of see where this uh, this volcano area is at. A ways away from the mainland over here of Alaska. It's over across the Aleutian Trench here. Things starting to kick up out here. Of course, whenever, you know, subduction zone activity stirs up, that's going to uh, stir up the volcano activity as well. Let's go ahead and take a look here at the Pacific Northwest. Uh, I don't see anything really new out here in terms of any larger movement. 2.2. Uh, from uh, yesterday. In fact, all this activity here. Well, let me double check. Bring this up to the newest. They yeah, have the majority of these from yesterday. One little 1.3 up in the Vancouver Island ranges, but uh, pretty quiet up there for now. Northern California, pretty quiet as well. Uh, Southern California, let's see what we got here today. Nevada rocking and rolling with a 2.8 and a 3.1. Uh, there was a 2.6 up here in the Bay Area, it looks like. On the uh, towards the Concord Fault. Aside from that, looks pretty quiet up there. Some movement down south here, around the uh, Baja California region. But uh, overall, you know, it's uh, looks like a typical day out here. But a typical day can easily turn into something big. Uh, Yellowstone National Park up here got a handful of some other earthquake activity being reported. Uh, this region has had a, a little bit of a swarm going on here in the last few days with about 51 earthquakes in a couple different areas, mainly up here around the uh, Mammoth, Wyoming region. Uh, the largest is going to be a 3.7 earthquake struck back here two days ago. So we do have a little swarm going on. Unfortunately, well, we better double check the USGS map. Let's see if they got that working yet. You know, it is a... Uh, so Thursday, you know, and some of these have been offline for the 24th, and they're still offline. So six days now, no one, I just, I just find it weird. This is stuff that runs by itself. You don't need a human 
to manually, um, you know, make the days advance. They should automatically just roll around. Uh, so we uh, we don't see we're not able to see the local seismograph stations out here uh, unless you go to the University of Utah, which also monitors the activity. But as I've stated here in the last couple updates, the amplitude readings here are incredibly squashed. Um, you know, as far as any as far as picking up any earthquake activity, you know, it just barely picks up some of those twos. I believe that was maybe a two or something from uh, last night. But who knows, we could be having hundreds of earthquakes in the very small microquake range and no one would be able to see it. I do have a seismograph station up there, uh, a live one, which is, uh, let's see, where is it? Going to be this one here, Madison 207, but that, uh, like I say, it may not be picking up any of the, the microquake activity that could be occurring. I'm hoping they get that fixed very soon because... Um, I know what good is it I get it the government shut down stuff like that but also at the same time that stuff doesn't really need maintenance to run it, it's just a it's a digital seismograph station there that should uh, just run on its own one earthquake over here around Lake Yellowstone as well a little point nine just after midnight so things are stirring up out there across Yellowstone but to the extent of anything worth noting uh, who knows I mean we're not seeing anything big but Again, we could be having a whole bunch of microquake activity and uh, not know it. Because, you know, when it comes to the reporting out here, only a handful gets reported of, of what's actually occurring. Uh, oil fields in Texas still rocking and rolling. One little earthquake in the New Madrid seismic zone this morning, 1.5. There's an oddball earthquake out around the Bermuda area from last night. Four-pointer. Nothing new to report out there for now. Uh, take a look here at the Earthquake 3D globe. As far as any newer clustering going on, well, got uh, about Taiwan southward here through the Philippines, still seeing a lot of activity. But that's this is starting to look more and more like the daily counts uh, with a bunch of twos and threes here in the crunch zone. Uh, some activity stirring up across the Kermadec Trench there with a five-pointer, it looks like. New Zealand pretty quiet, not a whole lot happening there. Uh, Japan, there is a, ee, there is a 3.2 right here, right in the Nankai trough, that subduction zone, uh, right about here. USGS not going to show it, but let's go over and check out the uh, Japan Meteorological Agency here, and we'll take a peek here at what's going on. Uh, there's the uh, Uh, eastern coast or yeah the eastern coast here of japan with that 4.6 but i'm looking for let's see see that one's on the back side here of japan there's a subduction zone with five different segments right here they uh they can produce some big time mega quake activity there and there's there's a little bit of movement happening there's one that's directly on a b maybe that's around a or a's back over here so b or c a little earthquake stirring up there today, about 10 kilometers deep for a 3.2. Uh, we can see it there on the uh, earthquake 3D globe. There's those earthquakes off the um, eastern coast here of Japan into the Japan Trench. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that. The Kuro Kamchatka Trench up north, still seeing some aftershock activity. And uh, we do have some movement way up here into China, it looks like with a 4.5. I believe the USGS should be reporting that. Maybe not. All right. But uh, pretty active day. Nothing big yet, but it could just be getting going here. That 5.6 coming into the Alaska area is the biggest one so far. Although it looks like it got downgraded to a 5.4. Yes, it did. So technically that is no longer, is it the largest magnitude? No, it's not. <laughs> it got dropped down, so now uh, that's going to go to a Kermadec, Kermadec uh, Islands region for a 5.5, about 1 o'clock this morning or so. Uh, either way, some stirring up amongst the plates out here. Middle America Trench, fairly uh, uneventful. These are just typical quakes that occur on any given day down there in the 3 range. Same for the Peru Chile Trench. Uh, 
There's at least two four-pointers, some from yesterday as well. A little bit more active down here. Some older quake activity from yesterday. One thing I'm noticing here is, you know, a lot of movement out across the eastern area here of the Caribbean plate. Maybe quite a bit of strain building up here around the Puerto Rico Trench. It's been uh, been pretty active out here since this quake struck a couple days ago, 6.5. Uh, and again, this region can see some bigger quake activity. I just think we need to keep an eye on this region here. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, aside from that, uh, pretty quiet across the center portion. Some movement up in Iceland from last night. And of course, Turkey out there still rocking and rolling in western Turkey with a swarm of activity. Nothing uh, new in terms of larger movement yet. Uh, the Big Island of Hawaii. Let's see what's happening out here real quick. It does look like there's a couple earthquakes around the area today and yesterday. Uh, nothing big. But uh, let's go take a look here at the uh, Kilauea Volcano website. See how close we're getting here to the uh, next eruption, which uh, should be coming up here in a number of days. We're waiting on episode number 36. 35 ended there back on the 18th of this month. So we've got uh, some buildup going on as far as inflation goes. Still going up here. This is the electronic tilt at the Kilauea Summit and the East Rift Zone. There's our last eruption, depletion, and then we're going back up here in inflation. So we, uh, yeah, I think we got a couple more days here. Maybe um, first week of November. Looks like that should be coming up. All right, space weather activity. Not a whole lot happening on the sun currently. We're pretty uh, pretty quiet in terms of any flaring activity. Uh, coronal hole activity has kind of moved on here. Got 91 facing us. This is uh, about a day or so old. This is much further over here across the western area of the sun. 93 probably scooted a little bit more over as well. Uh, but nothing major in terms of uh, any solar flare activity. It does look like things stirred up in the Aurora Department, though, here this morning. Getting a KP index up around the 2 range. And uh, it could be some of the coronal hole activity that's been facing the planet here in the last couple days. That does shoot out some high-speed solar wind stream. Uh, we'll check out the data here and see what we got. Uh, yeah, the speed bumped up here a little bit this morning. Notice that's above 500, up around the 600 range or so. Uh, the conditions there are kind of favorable for aurora activity uh, earlier, but right now we're back here above that zero line, so that's a northward tilt. We need uh, these run times to be south here into the negative territory, and that would uh, amplify the, the aurora activity. But right now, um, looks like that's being suppressed. But uh, nothing major going on there across the sun for now. Flare threats are fairly low, folks. Look at that 5% chance there for M-flare. 40% yeah, chance for C-flare. That is crazy. All right, let's give a quick glance here at the next close approach asteroids to the planet. Hopefully they're still monitoring these. Looks like they are. Um, I don't see anything close. Really nothing worth mentioning. We got this one, a 12-foot car-sized asteroid today, 261,000 miles, but that's fairly safe. Um, quick glance at the uh, hurricane activity. Let's see where Melissa's at. Still spinning out there. Pretty disorganized, fairly disorganized. Not a whole lot going on. It is expected to uh, remain a hurricane as it makes its way towards the uh, Bermuda area. It is outside the main zone here but uh, there's still hurricane warnings in effect for that region uh, and then it will obviously shoot northward really quickly it's already moving pretty fast there northeast at about 30 miles an hour so not a whole lot of time to uh, strengthen into anything major just remain a, a hurricane potential hurricane and then shooting north as it uh, dissipates there it is off the coast there, the east coast. It's going to shoot northward. Uh, precipitation here. Oh, yeah, this is looking good still. Looks like we got a decent storm coming up. I'm, I got my fingers crossed here. It's been looking 
favorable. It's trending wetter out here across the West Coast um, about Wednesday uh, next week. So that looks uh, looks good. I like the looks of that. And that's for California. Hopefully we get some more after that. We'll have to see how that behaves. But for now, near term, it does look like we'll see a little bit of beneficial rain coming up. All right, uh, seismograph stations there. A little small spike on Petrolia. Um, there's a little S wave. I'm wondering if that's from that five pointer in Alaska just showing up in Southern California. Sometimes it does. Um, but I don't see anything major happening out here for now. Just be on guard, folks. Have yourself a wonderful Thursday. Um, yeah, this is actually up in the red here. Probably because quite a few more, uh, quite a few folks reported uh, feeling this quake up in the Anchorage area. Nothing big, but as always, you know, Alaska sits up there along that uh, major subduction zone that you can see nine pointers easily. Have a good one. We'll see you guys out here a little bit later on this evening for the Thursday night update, uh, unless something major happens. Have a good one.